I'm Scott. I'm here to give you a few tips on uh, catching, jigging lake trout through the ice and talk a little bit about ice fishing in, in general. Um, obviously, I, I work for a company called Rabbit Baits, and it was a bait that was developed specifically for jigging lake trout in the beginning. It's expanded to another a number of different lines, uh, bass fishing and, and otherwise, but uh, right now it was initially started for lake trout fishing. Um, it's a patent pending bait. Um, there's Bob Jr. up there. He's also a rep. He's been upstairs all, all day long for, uh, for rabid baits. Um, let's see over there. Who's never been ice fishing? Anyone here never been ice fishing? Who's caught a lake trout? Who's caught a lake trout over 15 pounds? All right, so I'm going to give, who, who caught lake trout before? There you go. There you go. Here you go. Thank you. There you go. What the heck? <laughs> the audience isn't <laughs> quite that big, so we're not going to jump off or something. Here you go. Those are the little, the little kudos for, and who's caught a lake trout other than New York State? Fished anywhere else? Oh, you get a double sticker. You get one for the. <laughs> you get one for the box. There you go. So at least I know my audience. I know that, that everyone's been ice fishing. I know you've, you've at least attempted to catch lake trout or want to catch lake trout, and have caught lake trout. Question. Yes. Now, never caught lake trout through the ice before. I've always caught it in my boat, out the boat, up yep. in George. Never. Uh, never through, through the ice. ice. No. Want to learn something like that? That's what we're here. Yeah. And, and I've 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 done both. And I'll, I feel that catching lake trout through the ice, you can catch far more. Um, I personally, I never use tip ups. I am a I, I jig. I I drill a hole. I look for lake trout. And that's what I love to. do. That's my, that is my passion. That's how this whole bait developed. It's a patent pending bait. Um, and I'll I'll give you the progression through the years of of how we came to this this point. Um, rods, uh, medium to heavy, you want to use a medium to heavy rod, and I have one right here. This is exactly what, I, this is what I use. Um, again, they don't have to be real big. Um, 36 inches would be just, I think this is a 30 inch rod, but a 36 inch rod is about all you want to be. You, you, when you're, when you're jigging lake trout, you want to have control of the fish. If you get too far back, you get too long of a rod, um, you don't have that kind of control with the fish. So a, a 24 to 36 inch rod. Is, is preferable. Uh, spinning reels, heavy drag. You want to be able to reach the drag, adjust the drag. You never know what you're going to get. Most often in Lake George, you're catching fish in the 24 to 30 inch range. That's a, that's a very common 22 to 30 inch range. That's a very common fish. Um, you want to be able to adjust that drag so that if you hit one that is say in the 36 to 40 inch range, um, you can adjust that drag. You got to let them run. You got to play them out. So you want to be able to have a, a, a reel that's heavy enough, but also be able to reach that drag and adjust that. Uh, line. You can use monofilament. Uh, I prefer a fluorocarbon. Um, one of the things, that if you look at my rod, which is all beat the heck here, but um, if you look at it, what I've done is what I like to do is I take a braided line because if you're fishing in, I think there's about 15 or 20 feet of the braid yet. Yeah, there's the braid. So there it goes from a mono to a braid. So if you're fishing in normally 70 to 100 feet of water for lake trout, the stretch between where you're standing on the ice and where the fish are, which is usually the bottom, um, when, when you go to set the hook, there's all kinds of stretch in that. If you are using a, a one ounce jig versus a quarter ounce jig, there's all kinds of stretch in the line. So using that that braided is a good is a good suggestion to get rid of that stretch in the line, and then put about um, what I would suggest about 10 to 15 feet of a of a mono. I use a mono. I actually use eight pound test. I, I'll catch 15 to 20 pound fish on eight pound test. It's just a matter of being patient. Yeah. It's it's a fish. If the fish gets away, there's more fish in the lake. 
Um, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world. You see people throw the rod down and stomp around. It's not the end of the world. There's more fish out there. You will catch more fish. So, again, just take your time. Be patient. You're more, you're more likely to catch the fish if you're patient than you are if you're trying to horse it up through the, through the hole. Even, with a, even if you have 20-pound test, it's gonna, you're, you're going to get yourself in trouble. What's the test on your uh, braid? I'm sorry? The test on the braid. Uh, it, it's 30-pound test. 30 30-pound test. It's as thin a braid as I want, but, as, but it gives me a lot, absolutely no stretch. That's, that's the main, main point. Is that, Jake, yep. is that ice braid or is that just regular braid? That's ice braid. Yes. Ice braid. Ice braid. You, you, can, you, you can use either. The, there's, there's a number of different ones out there. Does that freeze as much as a regular braid, or, or is it what's resistant to it? So what's the difference? What's the difference? Yeah. It, it, I, I honestly don't know the difference. Okay. There's, there's, there's two braids. They'll, they'll tell you it's an ice braid. Um, it could be that it's waxed, it, because wax will tend to not allow the ice to build up yeah. on your line. So you, you'll feel that line. It'll feel a little bit different than the others. So okay. it is an ice braid. I can catch fish. I didn't say I was an expert on all the equipment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jig heads, quarter ounce to, to one ounce. Anybody, what, what, have, what is your preference uh, as far as um, three jig quarter. heads? Three quarter. Three quarter. Yeah. Three eighths. Just and, to get it down there. And you, yeah. So that that's the speed. So the so one of the differences. Yeah. Wow. So a one ounce or three quarter ounce requires a heavy line braid, which is what I have, uh, and usually for snap jigging and bigger fish. Okay, so that is you're creating a you're creating a disturbance on the bottom. You're taking that one ounce, that three quarter ounce jig, and you're hammering the bottom. And you, the, the the dust flies. It's creating um, vibration through the water. A, a lake trout has a column, and it usually goes for about 50 feet in either direction. So if a lake trout is just sitting on the bottom having a, a good old time, and it, it, maybe it's time to feed, they'll feel that vibration from 50 feet on either direction. So, and I think later on the slide, if, if I'm searching for lake trout, I usually go about 25 steps between holes. So, and we'll, and we'll get there, but there, uh, again, that, that big jig is to make a vibration, to make a, a, an impact. Um, the lighter jigs are for a little bit more finesse. Um, there was, a, he's not here right now, there was, a, there was a fellow here that I fished with once before that I learned something from. He was taking his, um, tube bait and he was laying it on the bottom and he had it just a quarter ounce and he, was, and he just lit it, literally let it sit there and that's finessing every once in a while he just pick it up and, and do it because lake trout will come in and take a look at your at your bait when you're when you're when you're doing the the, the you'll see lake trout fishermen um, they'll do the the big jerk they'll go way up in the air and they'll let it go back down they go way up in the air and let it back down um, that's just that's just a big a, a you know, it's just you're trying to get lots of motion in the water, lots, lots of action. Where there's finesse fishing, I'm sorry. That's attraction. Yeah, right. attraction. So one of the things that developed, and I'll I'll talk a little bit about the, the rabbit baits, is that this is a finesse lure, and the the hair does all the action. So this is basically drop it down, the fish sees it. You can, um, and there's a couple of techniques that we'll talk about it, but. It, but it, what it does is, again, it's just a finesse. You use a quarter ounce uh, jig head with it. And I've learned over the years, and I've done all the different, uh, different types of uh, jig heads that you can imagine. And I've come to find that I will catch, on an average day, uh, 20 to 30 lake trout every single time out. Got to find them, but I'll catch 20. To, and there's, there's a couple of guys here that, that have fished with me that can, uh, can vouch for that. Not, no, no bragging in, included. Um, some of the jig heads that I've used. Um, so for instance, I, I don't, and Jeff was going to bring me down some tube baits. Um, I'm going to just Can you get your dad to bring me down a tube bait? Tube bait? Yep. Yeah. I'd appreciate it. Um, just, just a regular, this is a three eighths. Um, this is a three quarter with a, with a blade at the bottom. Does, that, does the blade bait work better than like that? Blade, blade bait does not work better than, than that. Some, sometimes... Because I was going to try them this year. <laughs> I bought some already. <laughs> well, no, try them. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, no. I, um, everybody catches fish on everything. That, yeah. That's the reason that they're here. But your experience is, is that non-blade. I, non-blade, because sometimes too much is too much. Because okay. if, you, if you put a... And I, and I, you're probably going to put a tube jig on or you're going to put a swim bait? Uh, swim bait. Swim bait. 
So that I would advise putting a swim bait on on this particular one, only because you don't have a whole lot of go action going back here. If you get too much going on, fish don't know what it is. Um, fish have idyllic memories. So for instance, um, they're not gobies. What are they in Lake George? What are the, the little, they look like gobies? Sculpins. Sculpins, sculpins. So they have idyllic memories. So if they see a shape, so for instance, here's another rabid bait that looks just like a sculpin in Lake George. So they have idyllic memories. If they, if they see something that looks like a, a crawfish, if they see something that looks like a sculpin um, or something that looks like a minnow, they're, it's, they're attracted to it. If they feel the motion, if they are in a feeding frenzy, say if they're in a, uh, a, a school of perch, a school of smelt, uh, a school of sculpin, they're gonna go into a feeding frenzy. They're not looking for shape or, or color, they're just feeding. Whatever moves, they're gonna hit. Um, so for instance, uh, the, quarter ounce, the quarter ounce jig. The, the three quarter ounce is gonna get you down. If you pull up your Vexlar, we'll talk about our sonars and our Vexlars, and, and, or not Vexlar, but um, uh, flashers, our flashers later. But if you, if you happen to see something on your flasher or your sonar, or you happen to feel something hit down below, you wanna be able to have a reaction time. And the difference between a, a quarter ounce and a three quarter or one ounce is that a three quarter and a one ounce is gonna get you down there in a hurry. Um, because they're not going to stick around. They, they will absolutely, they're going to take a look at your bait, they're either going to take it or they're not going to take it. We're just going to take a quick, a quick rig on a tube bait here. So this is actually how I evolved. I started fishing with tube baits about mm, 15, 20 years ago. I was fishing on Lake George with two baits. So what I would do is I would take a a regular 3 8 ounce jig head. It's as simple as pulling it through the head. And I'm sure a lot of you, how many have used the tube bait before? Yeah. And it's just as simple as that. Okay, but there's a couple of ways to doctor these up. So one of the, one of the ways, and I think later on I've got something about the, the scents and things. But one of the things I used to take, and, and Jeff sells it right upstairs, is the smelt right. And I would literally, it's an oil, and I would fill the center of this with a with smelt right. Because the oil does not react with the water, so it literally stays stays right in the tube. As you pull it, little bits of the smelt right will go up in there. You can actually take a cigarette butt and soak it in smelt right. You can soak it in liquid mayhem. You can smoke it in, uh, smoke it, uh, soak it in, in uh, Berkeley Strike, any of those liquid, and just insert the cigarette butt right in the back or a piece of cotton, however you want to do that. Um, one of the other things that I found is that um, lake trout really, really love sucker meat. So you can take a small <coughs> piece of sucker meat and doctor it up, never longer than the tail. Usually just the skin, you can put a little bit of the flesh on there but the, so there's something about sucker meat versus you can even, um, you know, there's smelt in Lake George. There's a lot of other different, different things that you can, you can doctor these up with. But again, the sucker meat is, is something that is very preferable. And if you really want to get detailed, female sucker meat is better than male sucker meat. <coughs> okay. Yeah. How do you tell? Smell. Turn them over. <coughs> No, ser seriously though, there is a difference between male and female. I, I have found that the female sucker meat is, is, for whatever reason, is different. And the difference is white versus dark. The white is the female, the darker belly is the, is the male. Yes, sir? Now your jig heads here, you're not using round heads, are you? Um, you can. You can use any, any kind. There's, a, there's an eye, a single eye. I try to use white. I just happen to have this chartreuse one. But I try to use white all the time if I'm using a white colored bait. So white for glow? it, white glow jig head? you can use both. I've found that the glow doesn't work as well as just a plain white head. Um, let me just move on here, two page, and we'll talk about a couple of those. Um, we're we're going to talk a little bit in the in a little later about the times of when to go fishing, and I found that that first thing in the morning, uh, before daylight, 
It's not as and it's not as good as and, and Joe from Truck Justy Joe's was was just here. We agreed that 7 a.m. until 2 p.m. Those are the prime times. If if you get out there in the dark and you start jigging for lake trout, you're very light, unlikely to catch fish. Very unlikely. So the earlier is not the better. Yes, sir. Size tube jiggers. Three. Or uh, those are threes. I think three those are three inch. inch. Yeah. Three yeah. Yeah. Um, I, we, uh, again, I would, bigger is not always better. Um, I would rather catch 20 or 30 lake trout a day versus taking a big bait and going out and using that bait for two weeks. Yeah, you're going to catch a big trout. It may take you two weeks to do it. With, my, with a smaller bait, say if you used rabbit baits, um, I catch, I'm catching 20 to 30 lake trout a day, and I'm doing it every day for two weeks. And you will still run into that big lake trout eventually. Uh, some of the old time, some people will swear by it. Mine's, mine's a little doctored with, from years ago with, with a little uh, red feather, but that's a Hopkins. Uh, standby Swedish pimple. And I always use the one with the white white strip on it. And yes, it is glow. <clears throat> I've caught them on little Cleos. Anything that flashes, uh, the, the Rapala. Uh, crocodiles, just a silver, plain silver little crocodile. You notice none of my none of my stuff that I've, I've used over the years is very big. I just I've caught lots and lots of uh, fish over. 15 pounds, uh, six a year. Fish over 20 pounds, one or two a year. Out of Lake George. Out of Lake George. So we talked a little bit about smelt right, gulp, Berkeley strike, liquid mayhem. Um, I, I prefer liquid mayhem. So the way I would rig this particular bait, and I, I've caught the bigger lake trout on the rabbit bait uh, in in the uh, green pumpkin orange, and I've caught multiple fish on on this little white one. The way I would rig that is the same. I've got a little fish head jig, and I'm just going to rig it the same way. And what I do is I take uh, liquid mayhem. And I know Jeff has it upstairs, and I put the liquid. You can even see it right on the nose of the of the, of the jig head. The little red liquid mayhem. I put it on the jig head. I do not put it on the body of the, of the soft plastic. I don't. <clears throat> um, if you use spoons, you can take a little piece of Velcro, super glue the little piece of Velcro on there, and you can take a piece of cotton or, or the other side of the Velcro, and you put your scent right on the, on the, on that Velcro and put it right in your spoon. So if you're a, if you want to jig with, with a spoon, you're more, you know, you certainly can. Um, put some sense on that as well. We talked about tipping with sucker meat. Um, color of bait. White, white, white. That's the main color. Um, I've used every color over the years. Um, the, the blue, brown, orange, chartreuse, olive. Um, uh, again, I, I've I've seen to have caught in the, in most recent years the bigger ones on the uh, green pumpkin orange or orange. But if you're looking for multiple fish and having a lot of fun, white, whatever you can use is white. Um, that's why they brought me down a white tube bait, and that's that's the, that's the Lake George standard right now. That's what everybody uses. <coughs> Questions? <coughs> Electronics. Um, I, I talked a little bit earlier about um, using a flasher versus a sonar. Um, I, I think that when you are hunting for fish, there's an expression for you, hunting for fish, um, you you want to be able to know that when you when you drill a hole and you look down or you look at your you want to know what's there before you start jigging. Um, electronics have have revolutionized the, the ice fishing industry. Um, the difference I have found that with a flasher and and Joe was just here a little while. Some of it, some of you guys heard me talking to him about it. Is that the flasher has a, a response time is a lot quicker. 
The sonar gives you history, shows you fish leaving, shows you fish coming in. Um, but the response time, in other words, when you are when you're throwing that three quarter ounce jig, um, and you you want to you want to catch a fish that's leaving, you want to get his attention. If he happens to be swimming through, the sonar is going to give you that option to look at that fish coming and going, and get you there in a hurry. Whereas with a quarter ounce, um, you want to see that response time. If you've got something there and something comes in, one of the first things I'll start doing is I'll start reeling up. I don't I don't jig in front of the fish's face. I, I reel up as soon as I see that fish on my. Um, I actually have a Vexlar. That's a that's a hummingbird. Um, but as soon as I see a fish on my vex, I'm reeling up. It tracks that fish. And they'll come up and they'll chase it. And 70% of the time they'll take it, as long as you are pulling up on that fish. Augers, gas, electric, hand. Who's got uh, gas augers? Who's, who's still doing the gas auger? Anybody? Here, you get a sticker. There you go. You get, a, you get one for that auger. That thing weighs like 70 pounds. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good feel. <laughs> Where were the days when you, the it's, you start the auger up, you stand there, and it spins you around on the ice. Remember those? Okay, good. Two strokes, smoking, you know. Electric drills, can't say enough about them. Uh, lots of power. Uh, drill multiple holes all day long. Um, they're good units. Hand just drill. Put the clam adapter for electric drills. So. Um, I use a hand drill. I always use the hand drill. Uh, there's something about whether it be the noise of the gas drill or whatever there is, but I use a hand drill. I don't, you, you talk about lake trout. Everyone's worried about, I gotta have a hole big enough to catch my lake trout through. I have pulled 20 pound lake trout through a six inch hole. Mm. Patience when you're reeling it up. We talked about that earlier. You gotta be patient when you're, when you're fishing for the lake trout. When, you, when you've got one on the line, be patient with it. Don't horse it up through the hole. Um, you can, you can gaff a lake trout and release it. And the way to gaff a lake trout, I know I, I, I see you shaking your head. Um, the way to gaff a lake trout is if you've got a, a, a laker and you are extremely careful, you can gaff them underneath the chin. Usually they've got their mouth open. If, if you've got one tired enough to the hole, you can gaff him through the, through the top of the mouth. It, all you're doing is just touching that little bit of flesh on the underside and he'll come right up through the hole. If you if you gaff him any other way, you're going to kill the fish. Oh, the guilt plate, yeah. Yeah. That's, so again, that, that patience of never stick your hand down the hole and try to grab him by the mouth. You will you will cut yourself severely. You, you will be hurting for a couple of weeks. Um, so unless you are only doing catch and release, um, some of the smaller ones, the, the six-pound fish, the... Even some of the eights, um, never gaff them. I just literally tire them out, slide them up on the ice, take a picture, right back down the hole. Again, I'm, if I'm catching 20 or 30 Lakers a day, I'm putting every one of them back. Uh, it is rare that I will keep a lake trout. It is rare. Um, talk about picture taking. So say you're alone. How do you take a picture of your lake trout when you're alone? Because remember, you're, we're, we're gonna, you're gonna try to release this lake trout. You want it, you want it to go back, and you want somebody else to catch it, or you want to catch it another day. How are you gonna take that? How are you gonna take that picture? Anybody ever do that? Just on the ice is where I, I just put it on. The ice and I, try, I put the rod there for just a little. Wouldn't it be nicer if you were standing there holding that fish and and then <laughs> sliding it down? Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you exactly how I how I do it. I think there's a picture here. It'll, it'll come up in a minute. So what I do is I put my camera on, uh, my phone on video. And I've got one of the little Chappelle sleds up there and I take my camera and I hit, as soon as the fish is up through the ice, I got my phone ready because I know I'm, I've got, I got my rod, I go, oh geez, I got a good one on. So, so I got my camera, uh, my phone ready, it's ready to go. And I set my camera on something on the, on the sled just like that. And I finally get the fish through the ice and I hit play on my, on my video. And I do the, the, the whole bit of, of showing the fish, put the fish back down the hole. That's the first priority. You, want it, you do not want to kill that fish. You do not want to keep them out. Hold your breath for 60 seconds. That's the same thing you want to do with those fish. You don't want them out of the water more than 60 seconds. Put them back down the hole. Go back. And you can play that video and stop it and then click a picture. 
You know how to click a picture on your on your yeah. phone? Yep. So stop video, click your picture, there's your picture. So you can actually get some really good photos of you with that fish on a stop picture. Wow. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. I've done it on I put it on my iPad, I've done it on my phone. So again, if you want a picture of yourself holding that fish versus something on the ice, you know, it could be, oh, I, I got the camera down here. It's only a fish that big, but <laughs> it looks it looks really big. So if you want to get a picture with yourself, there you go, and you're all by yourself, you can you can do that. Um, the last one on there was drill. <clears throat> so I actually graduated my, I, I'm, 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 an, I'm 62. So I, I'm an old man now. So I actually, my son for Christmas last year, two years ago, bought me a hand drill and it goes on to one of the, the, the bits that Jeff has upstairs. And that's all I use right now is that, that drill. I, it's amazing. I just change, my battery runs out. I just flip a new battery on. I drill my hole. I still use a six inch hole. It's easy for me to drill. I can drill all kinds of holes that I need to do. So those are the types of drills. Oop, there you go. That was done. That that picture was done exactly how I just told you. That's a that's my camera is sitting on the seat of my Chappelle sled, and there's the fish. Structure. Topo maps. So one of the things that before you start fishing, you want to you want to look for certain types of structure. No, I'm not going to tell them where I fish. I, I've I've fished with this this guy has hounded me. Um, <clears throat> what I look for for structure, we talked. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is, is time of, uh, time of day. We said you know don't don't fish after 2 p.m. and getting there before dark really isn't to your benefit. Um, usually. As soon as the sun hits the horizon in the morning, that's when I start catching fish. I usually try to get there a little bit earlier than that, but that not only the time of day, but the, the I look for structure. Um, one of the things, for instance, uh, a, a topo map will give you a location on, say, this is Lake George. Um, I had a friend call me up last year. He goes, I'm, I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to, um, there's a state park. What's the state park in there? What is it? Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Yep, Hearthstone, which is somewhere right up, right up here. Okay, so Hearthstone right there. He goes, I can park at Hearthstone, and I, and I want to go lake trout fishing. Where should I, where should I go on a lake? So I looked at the, I looked at my topo map, and I kind of said, oh, well, there's some structure right there. It goes from 15 feet all the way out to some of the deeper water. And that's where the lake trout tend to like to stay, is in that area of about 40 feet to 70 feet. And basically they, they stay there and they look for a meal. Are there, are there fish up on the shallows? Or is there a school that's swimming along in their, in their zone that's going to go up onto the shallows? Smell, that sort of thing. Um, so a topo map is a, is a real good place to start. The other thing is Navionics. I don't, that's all I use is the Navionics. And it's an app on my phone. Anyone here have Navionics? Oh boy, I don't have enough stickers. <laughs> Navionics, um, it's a little app right here. It opens up. And let's see, where, where was the last place I fished? Where am I? I'm on Lake George. And it came right up, it came right up to, there's Fish Point, which is Hearthstone. And it's a lot more detailed than that topo map. Yes. So if you look, if you look at this, I'll just show you real quick how, de how detailed that is, the Navionics. <laughs> so again, I, I I highly recommend. It's just a I think it's a six dollar app, seven dollar app on your phone, um, and it does tracking. So you, you'll walk out to a particular spot and you'll turn around and it'll tell you exactly where you've been. So it, it's it's an amazing amazing app, the Navionics. Joe, do you have Navionics? Absolutely. There we go. So the, the structure they like in the winter, you're saying, is, uh, you know, along quick drop-offs? Quick drop-offs, yeah. Okay. So if you, if you find a flat, 
uh, a big hump, a flat edge of, of off the deep area, saddles, uh, edges. Edges I call hidden gold mines. So you, you come to a, 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 a perch, like there's a lot of perch fishermen. I think Joe may have done something on perch fishing earlier. Um, those, those big areas, those areas, those big flats where all the, the bait fish are, you drop off into that 40 feet of water, that 50 feet of water, and you keep searching for those lakers, they love that, that 40 to 50 feet of water. There'll be a school. You may not find your biggest fish there, but you're definitely going to find a, a, a large variety of, of lake trout there. Move, move, move. Uh, up in Hague, um, there's a big flat right out in front of Hague. I don't, the map only, the other side of the map shows, shows Hague, but there's a big flat right out in the front of the brook area in front of Hague. Uh, one day, my son and I drilled 150 holes looking for lake trout. Move, move, just keep moving. You have, if you have electronics, you're going to see the Lakers. Uh, if I drill a hole, I'll fish it. I always fish a hole. I, I'm not going to waste my time drilling a hole and not fish it. So I'll, I'll fish that hole. Even if, even if I'm looking for a structure and my Navionics sometimes uh, might be, because we're looking for so much of a drop in areas, I might be 20 feet off. I've, at, I've literally gone from here to here. No fish there. I, I catch fish here. I I've, I've fished there. I'm going, there's got to be fish here. But there was nothing there. I move a few feet, and now I'm off that off that edge. And as soon as I'm off that edge, I'm catching fish. So we just keep moving. Questions about humps and edges and drops? They like humps. They like humps. They like humps. Just like smallmouth. <laughs> like smallmouth. Early early in the morning, I tend to catch my fish in shallower water than deeper water. So that first thing in the morning. Say you're there at 6 a.m. I will stay from 6 to 8 in the shallow water. 8 o'clock until 2 o'clock, I'm in the deeper water. Or I'm fishing those edges from 70 feet, 60 feet. You consider 40 foot shallow? Is that what you... I do. Okay. I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> yeah. Because if, if you go to a, a 40 foot section and it's dry, you're going to go to the next 40 foot section and it's dry. But what can happen is, is you're going to hit that honey hole. You're going to hit that spot that is, so you, you, you come off 30 feet and you go into the 40. And you know it's going to go down to something else. It may go to 110 or, or even 150. But if you're at that 40 and you say, you're looking at the structure over here, there's structure over here, I've got a drop. You know there's current because Lake George is, is all, it's like a, just think of it as a, as a Hudson River. It's a big piece of current. There are times when you'll drop down and your line will be sailing off right to the north. So you, you get that current and you've got that 40 feet of water. You want to keep going on that 40 until you find that honey hole. If you, if you go 100 yards, then, you, then you're off your territory. Then you're off where you, want to, where you really want to be. Go back and start again. Go back into that 60 feet of water. Step out into the 80, come back to the 60, out to the 80. Sometimes you'll drill 150 holes. That day we drilled 150 holes, we caught two lake trout. I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. So obviously there, I just, I just recanted. I don't catch 20 lake trout a day. <laughs> fishing pressure. So there are times when other people go fishing where you go fishing, and, you, and they get fishing pressure. Um, Lakers tend to see lures, lots of different lures, and they get sick of looking at them. And that's fishing pressure, whether they're biting and, and, getting, and getting caught and thrown back, or whether there are just a lot of people, a lot of noise. You, you may be 100 feet up, but there's, they, they can still hear you down there. There's vibration, there's noise, they can hear you. That's fishing pressure. Snowmobiles, cars, four-wheelers, ATVs, um, that's fishing pressure. So if you're in an area where there's a lot of fishing pressure, plan on catching fish, but probably not that many fish. Try to find areas that do not get a lot of fishing pressure. Uh, look at the structure. Look at the lake and say, okay, where, you know, I, you, you drive across the bridge at the, at the Sagamore, and you look out of there, and there's, you know, 200 tents and, and shanties and all that sort of thing going on. We're, we're, uh, they're obviously fishing for perch, but if you're fishing for Lakers and, all, and you see all these people fishing for Lakers, 
that's that's the area. Eh, let, let them let them fish there. Go find your own spot. Find your own spot. It's pretty good. Snap and jig. That's what I was talking about earlier. We we're talking about the bigger the bigger jig heads, which is just basically up and let it hit the bottom. Up, and let it hit the bottom. You look on your uh, flasher and you see a fish come in. Up, oh, he doesn't take it. There's there have been so many times. Back when I used um, the Swedish pimple, used to use a lot of Swedish pimple, okay, and I'd come up, and we didn't have we didn't have a sonar, we didn't have a flasher at the time, and you drop your line down, and all of a sudden it, it curls up, and you go, wait a minute, my line should be straight because it's, I'm supposed to be hitting the bottom. That Laker took that took that jig on the way down. You pull up, and all of a sudden you got you've got your Laker. Um, one of the things that that has helped me catch more fish is understanding that when I see on my flasher a fish come into the flasher, I drop it on the bottom, fish comes up, I, the fish comes into the into the screen on the on the flasher and I just keep reeling. There's a video on YouTube and I'm not sure if they they can pull it up later. There's a video on YouTube where I'm fishing and it, it's a snowstorm and um, you hear me go, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Because what I'm doing is I'm looking on my on my flasher and I see a, a laker chasing it. And I'm going, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> come on, catch the, you know, catch the laker. I did. I did. So if you can get them to chase it, they will they will take it almost every time. Finesse jig, rabbit baits. We talked about that earlier. Dead stick. Dead stick. This gentleman over here, I, I learned something from, from this gentleman right that right there one day. We were, we were out, I was out fishing. He was always asking, you know, how, how are you catching all these fish? What's what's going on? How do you do this whole thing? So we got talking, and then, I don't know, a year or two, two later, I made him out on the ice, and he says, watch this. He puts it on the bottom, doesn't move it. It's just sitting on the bottom. And he goes, flips it a couple times. Oop, I feel him. Reels up, lake trout. I go, Wow, I've never seen anyone do that. So dead sticking can be two different things. You can leave it on the bottom. Um, that fish that I showed you earlier that I took the picture with, I'll, show you, I'll tell you exactly how I caught the fish. Fish fished most of the morning. That, was, that fish was about 16, 17 pounds. I fished most of the morning. Uh, I fished a really shallow area, uh, 30 feet. And then I got off the hump, I went into the 60, 70 feet, I fished around, I caught a bunch of fish, not, not like what, what I wanted to. Um, the day was getting on, it was probably 11 o'clock in the morning. I went back to, the, <clears throat> to that spot, I said, geez, it's only 30 feet, maybe I can catch some perch. Um, I, well, I had something else to do, I, I dropped my line in with, with um, this one right here. <clears throat> I was in about 20 feet from uh, 10 feet from the bottom, so I was in 20 feet of water. Just let it sit there. Walked away. I said, ah, I'm not going to fish for perch. I'm, I'm going to go home. So I was picked, I folded up my, my hand auger, uh, put all my stuff in my sled. I walked over, and I looked, and there's a big red blip on my screen, dead sticking. I picked the second I touched that rod, bam. I can't tell you how many times that I've been either lazy or just <laughs> Just trying to take a break from from the jigging because I, I move. Remember I said move 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 drill 150 holes. I'm I never sit still. I got ADD when I'm on the ice. I never sit still. But those times, those times when I'm out there and I let that rod sit there and I walk over and I talk to my son or I talk to somebody else on the ice and I walk over and I pick up that rod. Bam! They're just sitting there waiting for it. They just they're just sitting there looking at it. They're trying to understand what that is. One of the things that has been special for us is the, the action on the hair. So dead sticking has a whole new meaning with this hair sitting there in the water. There's videos all over YouTube and um, it's just this hair keeps working for you. So dead sticking has a whole new meaning with our bait. Low and slow, that's, that's Mr. Low and Slow over there. Drop it on the bottom, a couple little taps. Drop it on the bottom, a couple little taps. Midwater shaker. Um, sometimes you're looking for the thermocline. Thermocline is the difference in the temperature of the water. So you find that thermocline and the fish are not on the bottom. I've, I've drilled 25 holes today. <clears throat> Haven't found a single fish on the bottom. I bring it up, all of a sudden I'm, I'm starting to see fish come into my, on, on my uh, flasher at 25 feet underneath the ice. There's the thermocline. 
So I bring up and I'll just start, just shake it. You're just making a vibration in that area because you're not catching them on the bottom, you're not catching them on the top, you're not chasing it. So let's try that thermocline and I'll, you'll get those fish that are swimming through that thermocline, they'll feel the vibration, they'll come in, you'll catch fish. Just under the ice, many times. I have been frustrated. I, I just said, I, I fished the bottom, I fished the middle, and I'll be bringing up and all of a sudden, bang, as, just as it comes through the, through the hole, you'll see a fish flash by. Uh-oh, time to fish underneath the ice. Drop and reel. Um, one, of my, one of my favorite things to do is to drop it all the way down and reel it, reel it up. If you're just searching, drop it down, reel it up. You'll find out if the fish are on the bottom or you'll feel, see if they're that 25 feet up or 30 feet up. Drop and reel, you'll attract fish. Questions? I, I had a question about your lures there. You're talking about scent. Where do you put the, the scent on like your lure? Every one of these is scented already. Oh, they are? Yep. But I, again, what I do is I put it right on the head of the, of the, of the weight. But whether you use a round ball or a, a jig head, my, the eye's gone on that one. But the, the jig head itself, I'll just you can show you. You can see the little, the little red lip of man's right on the front of that. Careful with the hook. <coughs> Um, zonker. If you're a fly fisherman, it's called zonker material. Okay. So that's Champ Lake Champlain. There's a there's a video on uh, YouTube. That's that's my son. He's upstairs. Um, Where you get that from? That's Champlain. There's a video on on YouTube. It's called Sight Fishing Lake Champlain. Look it up. You'll see that that uh, we took rabbit baits and we took a Berkeley tube bait side by side. They cut a six foot hole in the ice with a chainsaw. They're fishing in 15 feet of water. The Lakers are swimming through, they're, they're chasing out wives. And two baits side by side, 10 to one. 10 on rabbit baits, one on the Berkeley. Let's see if we can get this to play. Won't play. Won't play. I'm just see if we can get it play. Technical assistance. How do I get this to play? There we go. Look at the picture. Look at the picture. Nope. I double click. I think on your computer you got it correctly, right? Here comes technical assistance. Take my word for it. Upper right has plate. Is it? Where are you? Very upper right. Right click. See, I'm telling you. Or is that just a rock? Oh, that's just a rock. rock. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Like a I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Right click. Time of day and weather. And we talked about this earlier. Twenty to twenty to forty feet. Twenty to forty feet earlier. Um, I've caught most of my twenty pound fish. My fifteen to 22 is the biggest out of Lake George. Um, those fish came at first thing in the morning, shallow water. And I call that, that 20 feet to shot the basically 30 feet shallow water. 40 to 100 feet after sunup, never after 2 p.m. Go home, drink beer, and watch football. Wow. <laughs> really? That's it, huh? That's it. That's it. Go home That's and watch good. football because a after 2 p.m., um, I've caught fish after 2 p.m., but it's few and far between, and they are not usually any of the any of the big ones. Maybe I'm so tired by the end of the day that who knows? But um, the way, Poppy. High pressure versus low pressure, and we're talking about weather extremes. Um, any any thoughts on that? Anyone? 
fish any, any preferences over high pressure or, or low pressure? Um, I have found that low pressure systems, um, extreme wind, extreme uh, rain, when it rains, get on the ice. If it's raining, get on the ice. Low pressure. Low pressure. Snowstorm, good. Rain, I don't know what there is about rain. Get on the ice. There are, you know, you know, fog, rain, oh my gosh, those are the days you catch the big fish, those are the days we catch tons and tons of fish. And my dad would always say, you want water running in a hole. Yeah. But, uh, water running in the hole is not as good as rain when it first starts. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take that back a little bit. Water running in the hole has always been difficult. For, for some reason, there's a, there's a change in, a, in the thermocline. There's a change in the in maybe even the taste of water. I'm not sure what it is. But um, if you're fishing in 30 feet of water, all of a sudden you've got all this force of water going in the hole. It really, for me, it hasn't been that that good. Ice conditions. Safety first. Um, over the years, I'm, I'm, when I was a, a young buck, I, I did some very foolish things. <laughs> very foolish things. Um, I've, been, I've been through twice. I've been through twice. Um, it's been 30 years since I've been through. Um, once you go through once you go through the second time, you really never want to go again. I've been over my head. I've been down so that I've been over my head and come back up and climb back that's up on scary. the ice. Yep, that's the scariest thing you ever want to. You ever want to. Anyone here ever been through the ice? Not like that. Not like that. <laughs> a foot. That's yeah, about it. In your waist, so you know, your knees. I'm like that. Through the ice. That's I've scary. been through the ice in North Pole. There you go. How, how, what, where were you? Uh, well, it was on a lake in Vermont. Yeah. And well, we were just, it was spring, it was probably like very early March, right-ish or something, or yeah. first week in March, and we just made some dumb mistakes. We, we fished till dark, just after yeah. dark, and we walked off the ice a different way than we walked on the ice, just mm -hmm. stupid stuff. Yeah, what what lake? Lake Iroquois. Okay, oh, you're way up north. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, sure. Carmi. Carmi's a big lake trout, uh, yes. northeast kingdom. Yeah. Lake Carmi. Yeah. And the igloo effect. So I, I call it the igloo effect. If you are, you'll see pressure cracks. You'll see cracks in the ice. Um, there's a there's a video from just <laughs> stupid thing. Last year, uh, we're on. I was with my son. We're we're drilling ice. Every time we drilled, the ice would crack. It was maybe three inches of ice. Maybe three inches of ice. We're on Lake George. We're up at Hewlett's. Really couldn't get out to where we wanted to go. We're drilling holes and he drilled one and he was inshore and I was on the other side of the crack. So basically we had a Chappelle sled. I threw all my stuff, slid it across the ice. He threw a rope and the sled pushed the sled over. I hopped in the sled and I said, pull me. <laughs> That's the only way I was getting across, across that crack because if I stepped on it anywhere else, I was gone. And there was no... It wasn't iced where he could get close enough to get to help me in. Dumbest thing I've done in a long time. So, um, I, ice safety. Uh, what I call the igloo effect is whether it's a pressure crack or you happen to see just see a see a hump in the ice um, all day long. If you, you know Eskimos live in igloos and they live in igloos for a reason because they can they can keep a temperature in an igloo up to 50 or 60 degrees so what happens in that igloo effect if you've got a, a pressure crack where the ice is built up it gives you that igloo effect the sun hits it it warms up underneath it melts the ice from underneath not from the top so the top looks just the same or you've got a bubble it looks just the same on the top and you step on that thin ice and down you go the whole thing will, the whole thing will crash and there's no place to get to. You have to swim to the to the spot to get back to, to climb yourself. So you, early ice or any time, you should always have those safety claws around your neck. Don't go on the ice without them. And gentlemen, that's all I have to offer for lake trout fishing, I believe. Yeah. Questions? Do you put any uh, bait on your on your hook, whether you're using a tube or the... Yes. Um, earlier, I, I said with a tube bait, what I would will take was uh, sucker meat. I'll oh, take it. Take okay. never never longer than the tube. Yep. Yep. Never longer than the tube, um, 
and very, very thin, only because it, it trout have, um, I don't know, it's like 10,000 times the, the ability of us to smell something. So in the water, all they need is just a little touch. Even in the same thing, we talked about the liquid mayhem that I use. I just put a, a teeny tiny bit of liquid mayhem. You, some people, they gob it on. You don't have to gob anything on. Everything should be uh, minimal, as, as little as possible, um, because they can smell 10,000 times better than, than we can. And you don't want to affect the action of the, yeah. of the jig. And you use them without bait as well? Sometimes they're um, well, earlier I talked about we could, we, could, we put um, smelt right, right yeah. in there or, yeah. or some kind of cotton in there. Yeah. You had a question? Yeah, I came in late. Uh, how long ago in Lynn did you come up with the idea of feathers on this uh, product? Um, it's been about two years. Uh -huh. About two years in development. So we've gotten a lot better at making these baits <laughs> than we were in the past. We were hand pouring them before. Now we're mass producing them. We just, we just did a thing with... Um, a company called Monster Bass Co. They do a monthly. It's like mystery tackle box, and we just did twenty four thousand units with with I Monster Bass Co. Earlier today, and they're interesting. Yeah, it is patent pending, um, and it, it the cool thing as as one of the reviews just came out uh, on YouTube. They the guy goes, "Well, gee, catch fishermen, will it catch fish?" Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, it does catch fish. That's that's one of the differences. You know, you got a lot of cool baits out there, but if it catches fish, that's that's the most important thing. Yes, sir. Yeah, Lake George, very big. Uh, access. Uh, you mentioned Hearst, Hearst, Hearthstone. Yep. Uh, to try to catch uh, lake trout. Uh, a lot of private, you know, yep. property on the lake. Over. Uh, yep. Go ahead. And where, where besides Hearthstone can somebody walk out and you know park? Yep. And because it's a long walk, I'm a, you know perch fishing guy, dog. And you got a ton of gear too. Yeah. Um, so anywhere decent where you you gotta go super far miles and miles. You don't, I don't have a ATV of, or snowmobile. A lot of folks park at Dunham's Bay. Dunham's Bay. That's a long walk also out there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You got well, quarter mile to the. Okay. You want to go to the mouth of the bay, right where it breaks to the open water. Okay. That's that's a good spot. Okay. <coughs> Million dollar beach. You can park there. Okay. Uh, G Camp Ginger Cook, which is on the, on yep. Yep, sure. on the other side, you can you can park at the end of Camp Ginger Cook. Pretty limited there. You want to be there early if you're going to park there. Um, the state launch up by the Sagamore. Mm -hmm. You can pull in there. Uh, Hearthstone. The state launch by the Sagamore. Vets yep. Park, I think, right? What's that? Vets Park. Vets Park. Yeah, you can do it. any of the parks. There's a couple little side roads yeah, there up got, in Bolton. They had bubblers. You can't get out Did they? of the veterans. Slash. Yeah. yeah. Before you go across Sagamore Bridge, right there, you mean? Yeah, Just right on the left-hand side. Right used, used to be... Um, There's a village right there. Right. Um, they had bubblers there last year. What was the name of the, the boat place that was there, and they sold it to the, to the state? I can't remember the name of it, but you can, you can get yeah, access there. Um, up at Hague, same thing, public beach. Any of those public beaches. Um, again, up in, up in Bolton, there's a couple little private roads, a couple little private beaches. If you looked them up on, online, they're all right there. Okay. 40M Beach. 40M Beach. Yeah. They're not super far to walk out. Okay. No, Hearthstone is a simple one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a simple because the for lake trout fishing, it is right. You know, your area is right here. Mm -hmm. um, if if I were if I were if if I wanted to go catch a big fish, uh, I'm I'm fishing this section right in here. I, I love this. I love this little this great drop right here and then um, it goes into some of the deeper water there's lots of structure up in here but you got to be careful you, you know you get to that that bigger water it stays open a lot longer yeah. you get current through here um, so I, I look for these the same thing right off of this is where ginger cook is the same thing here you got a lot of structure you got a back bay uh, you got big open water that they can go cruise in if they want, but you, you've got all the structure area. Same thing around Long Island. You've got all this structure in there. Um, this summer, I had the opportunity to, to cruise this side, and I couldn't believe the number of, of lake trout that I saw right on this this side ledge right in through here where this, where this structure is. So there's Million Dollar Beach. That's about a mile walk. About a mile walk out there. Um, I'm just going to flip it over. Oh, he left. Good. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be Hewlett's. <coughs> I'll be Hewlett's. Um, there's 
So what what I the places that I fish up here in, in Hewlett's is this structure right here. There's a, this is a great perch ground right here. So Hewlett's Landing is down here. I go a little bit up. I go right up the road up the up to Taft Point, just beyond.